Now I think what we'll do is we will add the Facebook like and the Twitter buttons to this. Now in order to do that what we need to do is get that Facebook like and the Twitter tweet code. We're going to start off by doing that with Facebook. So let's search for Facebook like button code and that brings up this developers page and you can either put a URL in here or you can leave it blank. If you leave it blank it automatically uses the URL of the page in particular so that means you generally want this to be blank. I'm going to turn off the send. My layout I, I'm gonna you have a choice of standard button count which puts how many people have liked it beside it or box count which stacks it or standard which is essentially uh, like this I'm gonna go ahead and select button count now in terms of the width you can specify the width of this really I only want this much to show up so I think I'm probably gonna say about 75 pixels wide I'm not gonna show the faces faces would be the faces of people who liked it I'm not gonna show the faces I can pick a verb to display I'm gonna leave it at like I'm gonna leave it at this light color scheme I'm gonna leave the font alone and I'm just gonna get the code now you have three different versions of the code that you can use I think with Thesis it's nice to use the HTML5 code. It's much lighter weight than any, any of the other choices. So if we stick with HTML5, we have two different things we have to deal with. The first one is the JavaScript code. And this JavaScript code we'll, we're going to put on every page and we'll use the uh, Thesis settings for that. And then this code is the code we're going to put in our widget. So let's start off actually by putting this code in the widget back over to the widgets here we are here's our text widget now we just paste that code in the text widget and hit save and then in order for this to show up we need to add the JavaScript and what we're going to do is add that JavaScript using thesis site options and go over to stats software and scripts and we're going to place that JavaScript code right here, which will place it at the bottom of the page. So there's our JavaScript code. Copy that. Place it at the bottom of the page. And hit save. Okay, now if we come over and refresh this, we've got our like button sitting right here three people have already liked this that's interesting and it has pushed our it has pushed our uh, menu down again so we're gonna move that menu up a bit but before we do that let's just add the Twitter button to this too okay so that was the Facebook now what we want to do is add the Twitter button code so I'm just gonna search for Twitter button code and again back to this resources now in this case what we'll do is we'll pick the horizontal count just like this there are a whole bunch of other settings that you can do here which I think are you know potentially worth considering but we're going to do this as simple as possible here for the moment and the simplest thing possible is to either pick no count or the horizontal count and just grab this copy it and come back over to our widget and paste it. Now this is one of those cases where oops, where'd my widget go? Okay, over to widgets. We don't this doesn't have a separate JavaScript code. This simply has the well it has JavaScript embedded in the HTML here, which is not absolutely perfect, but it's what it is. We put those two things side by side here in this now what happens is they will both show up side by side okay so now we need to give ourselves a little bit of padding margin stuff like that I think I'm gonna take this I think I'm gonna give myself some bottom margin for the search bar first 
So search bar settings, bottom margin, I think I'm going to, now let's give that 20 pixels of bottom margin. It's going to give the menu some heartburn, but. Okay, that pushed that down there. And then you can see that, unfortunately, the Facebook button and the Tweet button don't really line up. So we've got to do a little bit of monkeying around with this in order to make it so that they do line up. Plus, we want to pull this back up to where it belongs. Uh, you know, we might actually just need to do 10 pixels on both of those instead, though. So if we come back over to this, search bar settings, 10. and 10 and hit save and then in our menu settings let's take it let's take 20 out of there so take that down to 14 see how that looks You know, that is almost good. Let's straighten this out before we do anything else. And what we're going to have to do essentially is we're going to have to give this an inline style to make it come up. Now, the what happens is this, this creates an iframe and uh, gives that iframe a relative position. So what I can do is is knowing that it gives it a relative position I know I can just come in here and state style equals and then top colon minus three so if you've watched my relative positioning absolute positioning videos you'll know exactly what's going on here Essentially what I'm doing is I am moving, since it's got a position of relative already, I'm just moving it up three pixels. I'll hit save to that. Come back over to the this and refresh it. Um, no, that did not do the job though. Style equals top colon, oh, minus three PX, right. Not 3, but 3px. Three there we go. So now those two line up across the top nicely. And then I think I just need to... Well, actually, I think that's probably fine like it is. So using this plugin, we've added a... We've added our, our clickable header logo. We've added a little background image for a border. We've added a menu, a search bar, and a like and tweet buttons. Now there's obviously a whole bunch of other things that you can do with this, with this plugin because there's lots of potential options for how to lay out a header once you've decided that you're going to widgetize it. But I think that works pretty well for an introduction.